with my colleague Stephen Livingston in his office here at the School of Media and Public Affairs before you ship out <laughs> off to Africa. You're often traveling. Yeah. You're often focused on information communication technologies. Where are you going? What are you doing? You know, I'm going to have a great opportunity to do to introduce two people. Uh, first of all, one of the graduate students who works with me now, uh, Mike Hauer, is going to be accompanying me to Nairobi, where we will have a chance of actually meeting and working with a former graduate student whose name is Primoš Kovacic. Primoš has been working in Nairobi for several years. He took some time to come and study with me, and now he's back after on the heels of some major grants from major funding organizations. He's back in Africa trying to use technology to solve some of the problems that face people in cities like Nairobi. Basic problems having to do with security, sanitation, etc. He's doing fascinating things, and I know you're doing this too, with technology, mapping, yeah. cameras. Yes. What is he doing and why? Uh, what Primush is doing very specifically right now in his organization, which is called Spatial Collective, is using digital maps and cell phones to try to address some of the sanitation issues that confront people living in informal communities, is what they're often called slums, uh, where there is no garbage collection. So in ingenious ways, what Primoš is trying to do is find a way of having life in these communities more sustainable, more livable, to offer people uh, an opportunity to have dignity that they otherwise have a hard time finding, living in the conditions that they are in. My current student, Mike, is interested in resilient cities. He wants to know about what constitutes sustainability in urban environments. And in order for Mike to really understand what that looks like, requires that he understand San Francisco and New York and Washington, but also with it in mind that a billion people are living in these informal communities to really understand sustainability, to really understand resilience is going to require that he also spend time in the Limas, the, the uh, Nairobis of the world. And this technology can literally help these folks pick up the trash. It, it can help organize the communities to do that is what it does. In places where organization is so lacking. That's right. And you know what for me is so exciting about this is, is that here I have a brilliant current graduate student who has the opportunity to learn from a brilliant former graduate student in the real world, in that environment. You can't learn from a book what you can learn from talking with people who know the community, know the environment, know what needs to be done. We are a school of media and public affairs. Our students, our undergraduates, study journalism, mass communication, and political communication. What does any of this have to do with any of that? You know, political communication has historically had a lot to do with newspapers, radio, television, asking questions about how a television ad affects voting behavior, and that's, that's terrific. That's still an important part about the discipline. But today, because of the massive effect of cell phones, of internet connections, of satellites in space, of everything where information technologies come to affect our lives, political communication has broadened its scope. And I, I happen to be in a position of leading some of that expansion. Thinking about how information affects lives is how really... information affects lives. That's right. Through technology, on the ground, in places where governments aren't strong or powerful. Everything from newspapers to cell phones. That's right. When are you leaving and how long are you going to be gone? How long are you on the road? You know, Mike and I are going to be leaving this coming Friday. Uh, we're going to spend our Thanksgiving break in Kenya rather than home around Turkey. Um, and we're going to be gone until about the 1st of December. So all together, only about 10 days. But this will give us enough time for Mike to become acquainted with Nairobi and with life in Kenya and to get an insight into the kinds of things that are being done not only by Primoš, but also by the other technologists that are there. There's something called iHub in Nairobi. Sometimes Nairobi is called the Silicon Savannah because of the concentration of digital talent that's there. Some of the most important technologies on the planet these days were not created in our Silicon Valley, but they were created in Nairobi. Things like M-Pesa or things like a form of open source digital mapping called Ushahidi that allows people to track all kinds of events. That's what we're going to be looking at. So it's really a great opportunity for both Mike and I to be continually inspired by what's unfolding in, in places like Nairobi. Maybe you'll do a readout when you come back. I would, I would love to. Safe travels. Thanks a lot.